Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books and my name is Drake. Today I'd like to explain the origins of the various Lantern Corps in DC Comics. The cosmic DC Universe can get a little out of hand, so I'll just keep it brief. Straight to the point, minimal filler, and just the facts. So, let's dive in. Billions of years ago, the Guardians of the Universe, these super old blue dwarves, formed an intergalactic police force known as the Green Lanterns, who were fueled by the green light of willpower of the emotional spectrum. Uh, basically, the emotional spectrum is the energy created by sentient life all across the universe. We really don't have time to get into that right now. Anyway, by channeling their willpower through their power ring, a Green Lantern is able to create constructs out of anything they can imagine. While you're probably familiar with the Green Lantern's Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart, it's actually their nemesis Sinestro, who was once known as the greatest of the Green Lanterns. After Sinestro was banished from the Green Lantern Corps for trying to enslave his home planet Kruger, he discovered the yellow light of fear, and years later, Sinestro embraced his fear of what the universe would become if it fell into chaos without his guidance. It was then that he formed his own corps to rival the Green Lanterns, the appropriately named Sinestro Corps. Their rings function much like the Green Lanterns in that they are able to create constructs. However, one unique function of the Yellow Power Rings is their ability to produce constructs of their opponent's worst fears. This yellow light has been the blight of the Green Lantern Corps for decades, but only recently did we learn the true, fearful facts behind its sinister shine. After the two cores nearly destroyed the multiverse in the Sinestro Corps War, two Guardians sought to protect the universe by other means and broke from their council to bring forth the Blue Lantern Corps to aid and boost the Green Lantern Corps in all future battles. Their rings run on the blue light of hope, but they are unable to create constructs without the presence of a Green Lantern. Their rings can also supercharge a Green Lantern's ring, as was seen when Hal Jordan was both a Green Lantern and a Blue Lantern at the same time. Think of the Green and Blue Lanterns like peanut butter and chocolate. They're each fine on their own, but together you get a delicious and unstoppable snack. Believe it or not, I pretty much pulled that quote straight out of Green Lantern Agent Orange. In what seemed to be a chain reaction of new, different color cores popping up everywhere, this blue battalion was soon matched by the Red Lanterns with their Red Light of Rage. This core was formed by Atrocitus, a guy whose entire sector was wiped out by the Guardian's first attempt at creating an intergalactic police force, the Manhunters. Whoops. The Red Lanterns used their rage to form constructs and vomit in acidic plasma. Not only that, but when receiving a Red Lantern power ring, the bearer's heart no longer functions and the ring becomes their new heart. Their blood is also replaced with liquid fire. Moving right along brings us to the pink, or um, violent lanterns, better known as the Star Sapphires. Long ago, a group of Owens broke away from the Guardians and learned how to harness the violet light of love. Originally, there was just one Star Sapphire, Green Lantern Hal Jordan's on and off again girlfriend, Carol Ferris, who fell into its power and was brainwashed to fight Green Lanterns. It wasn't until later that the Star Sapphires were granted free will and formed a core of their own. It's worth noting that as of making this video, Green Lantern Jon Stewart has just become the first ever recruited male Star Sapphire. And it's gone. Nope. Then there's the Orange Lantern Corps, which oddly enough is just one guy. Larflees. One part Gonzo, one part Daffy Duck, and all parts crazy, Larflees, also known as Agent Orange, wields the orange light of greed, and as such, he's the only one that has his power. Ages ago, the Guardians made a pact with Larflees, agreeing that he would be left alone as long as he does unleash the power of the orange light on the universe. After a misunderstanding, Larflees thinks that the treaty was broken and unleashes the wrath of his core. But Drake, you guys might be asking yourselves, how is there an entire Orange Lantern Corps when it's made up of just one dude? The answer is quite simple. Larflees is able to create constructs of anyone he has defeated and is capable of spawning entire battalions. This guy literally is a one-man army. Now onto the Indigo Tribe. While Hal Jordan's predecessor, Abin Sur, was helping on the planet Nock, he discovered the Indigo Light of Compassion along with Nock's enslaved indigenous race. After freeing the people and learning of the prophecy of the Blackest Night, more on that later, Abin Sur formed the Indigo Tribe. The Indigo Tribe casts individuality aside and instead embraces compassion and equality, which is why Abin Sur brought his enemies back to Nock and forced them into the tribe, making them nearly mindless drones of compassion. Here's a cool fact. The Indigo Tribe doesn't use power rings. Instead, they use primitive weapons that are infused with violet light, and what's unique about this light is that it can actually mimic the effects of every color of the emotional spectrum. The Indigo Tribe usually plays a supporting role to the main action, much of which involves these next two cores, if you can really even call them that. The Black Lantern core is as simple as they come. The embodiment of death, known as Necron, wants everyone to just shut up so that things can be quiet again. You know, like they were before creation. So when you're the essence of death itself, how do you accomplish this? Well, with zombies, of course. That's right, Necron sent freaking zombies across the universe to try to kill everyone and everything. It's really that simple. However, the dead they bring back aren't actually the people they were before, just kind of an artificial intelligence acting as the person they were before they died to try to rip out the hearts of those that were close to them. Okay, maybe it's not that simple. 
And last but certainly not least is the White Lantern, which I'll admit is still pretty enigmatic. The White Lantern seems to display different power sets depending on who's wielding the ring and, frankly, whoever's writing the story. There's been a little over a dozen people who wielded the White Light of Life for about three panels total, but as of right now, there is only one White Lantern. Former Green Lantern Kyle, the Torchbearer Rainer, who's pretty much Space Jesus. Currently, White Lanterns are able to use every color of the emotional spectrum. That might not seem too special, and maybe it's not considering that's essentially the power of the Indigo Tribe. The White Lantern is currently a central plot point in an ongoing storyline at DC Comics, so perhaps I'll get a chance to revisit this core at some other point down the line. Now, don't worry, there is a lot more about the emotional spectrum, but this is just a really solid foundation to start off with. If you want to know more about the various cores, just grab anything that says both Jeff Johns and Green Lantern on the front cover. This includes Rebirth, the Sinestro Core War, Rage of the Red Lanterns, Agent Orange, and Blackest Night. Oh, you can also read Green Lantern New Guardians. I guess. Though the concept of an emotional spectrum is still relatively new to comics, it's heavily featured in the short-lived Green Lantern the Animated Series, the game Lego Batman 3, and... the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. Thanks for watching Comic Drake, and insert catchphrase here.